Hey guys, welcome to another Sonically Sound video. Today, we're going to be going over reverb. Everyone's heard of reverb, but a lot of people probably don't think about it when it comes to a track. Reverb's really important to a vocal and a snare and other instruments in order to create an acoustic space. Otherwise, the mix will sound really dry and unrealistic. Everywhere has reverb, and the idea of reverb in a DAW is to create a space so that when someone's listening to the track, they can hear and imagine where where the space is. So today we're going to be going into vocals and how to use reverb on vocals. So I've got this track here. You can see that I've done some EQ compression and I've got a de-esser there. So I've done a lot of the nice sounding bits. So you always want to do that bit first. I always do compression, EQ, all that stuff first before I start adding in the reverb and stuff like that. The reverb is more of a final touch to make the mix sound really nice but you've got to get rid of the basic annoying parts first so what i like to do is a lot of people will just go here go to reverb and select one of these reverbs now i don't like to do that um, because then you're dealing with the reverb straight in your channel strip what i prefer to do is have a bit more control with the reverb so what i do is i use a bus Buses on Logic are like auxiliary sends if you're more used to using digital or analog mixers. Um, basically what it does is it sends this channel strip to a certain place which you can put other stuff through and then you control how much of the signal you put through. So I've got quite a lot of buses already so we'll just, we'll just go with bus 22 because that's the one that isn't being used. So when you do that, immediately the bus opens up. It's labelled AUX2. I can change it to be whatever I want, but we'll just leave it with AUX2 for now. So it's completely empty and it's going to the stereo out like we want it to. Now this is where I would insert my reverb. Now Logic provides four different types of reverbs. The best one, in my opinion, is Space Designer. Feel free to try the other ones, but I guarantee you'll find Space Designer to be the best. Um, it looks like this and I think it can look a bit daunting but the reason Space Designer is the best is it uses loads of um, presets and the presets have examples of what space it is so it kind of can give you an idea. So the first thing you want to do is go to where it says uh, factory default and already you can see that you've got these different sounds. You've got large, medium, small spaces, warp sounds and surround spaces. So that's to do with surround sound. Warp sounds are really weird, unusual sounds. Um, so I kind of want to go for a small or medium one um, and see what that sounds like. If you're going for something where you want it to sound really big, then yeah, go for a large space. When it comes to opening that tab, you then see there are all these different types of uh, sounds that you can use and basically what it means is so you've got rooms so they've someone has basically got the reverb sound of different rooms so you've got a small wet room wet meaning lots of reverb um, thickened vocals so that helps make the vocals thicker but it also gives you the time so that's 0 0.03 seconds so that's not going to be very long these are very short reverb spaces it does go further down and you can see it's got things like live stage and stuff like that um, halls is similar um, but it's a hall space and so halls will sound different to rooms uh, because of the material and the size and everything so you've got ambience hall dynamic hall stuff like that short vocal hall there are other things like gated reverbs we won't be using those on vocals gated reverbs are basically a reverb alongside a noise gate so after a certain point it just cuts off rather than fading all the way down to minus infinity db it cuts it off and it sounds quite punchy for snares and stuff and as you can see a lot of the examples of snares I wouldn't typically use it on a vocal but if you want to try something go for it spring reverbs are what you find in guitar amps and so they're not really used nowadays um, but again feel free to use them and then these are indoor outdoor and warp spaces I'm going to use plate reverb um, plate reverbs are basically how people used to create reverbs they used a plate they put a signal into the plate and it would reverberate and create quite a nice sound so I'm going to use a vocal plate so immediately this changes that shows the basically sound the impulse response what it sounds like what the reverb is going to sound like 
and then the only things you need to do once you open the preset is look at this dry and rev or wet um, section so because we put it in a bus basically we want the wet or the reverb to be maxed out because basically we don't want any dry signal because we have the separate channel strip for the dry signal this uh, bus is just for the wet signal so turn wet straight up to max and close that now what you if I play it I'm in love with the shape of you it still sounds the same and the reason for that is this here this dial is what takes um, the signal from this channel strip to the new bus and so it's really straightforward you just hold it down and bring it in now you don't want too much because you don't want it to sound unnatural um, but equally when you solo a vocal or solo anything and put reverb in it's going to sound like you've put loads of reverb in but you need to take into account what it sounds like once everything's playing alongside it so i'll just give you an example i'm in love with the shape of you we push and pull like a magnet do i know my heart is falling too so that's a bit much and it kind of sounds like she's singing in a bathroom or something like that um and I'm not really too keen on that. The thing with reverb is a lot of the time you want it to be discreet. You just want to kind of have it sitting sitting down at the bottom. And it just is there to add more but not to be obvious. Unless you want it to. Again, just if you want to be creative, go for it. But this is just uh, my standard practice for reverb. So if I play it now... I'm in love with the shape of you We push and pull like a magnet do and So now you can still hear the reverb It's very discreet um, But it does add to the vocal So that's kind of it um, The other thing you might want to do Is there may be particular frequencies you want to get rid of and stuff And the, the beauty of sending the reverb to a bus Is then you can then do what you like to the reverb Because then this whole channel strip Is just the reverb sound So now I can add an EQ to it. So if I go analyzer, when I play it, uh, the EQ will analyze what the reverb sounds like, and I can change it to however I want it to. I'm in love with the shape of you. We push and pull like a magnet do. I know my heart is falling too. I'm in love with your body. Last night you were in my room, and now my bed she smells like you. Every day discovering something brand new. I'm in love with your body. So what I did there is I basically have just boosted the high end, which is the main part of the reverb sound, just to give it a bit more of a shimmer. And I just found in 1K kind of area between 500 and 2K, just that main area, I found it just sounded a bit honky. And so I wanted to not get rid of all of it, but just kind of reduce it down. So I've just kind of made a large band curve and reduced it a bit, which makes it a lot sound a lot nicer. Um, and you can go really extreme if you want. Some people will use high cuts and low cuts to get rid of um, some frequencies and stuff. But for me, I feel that's fine. Um, yeah, and so then if you play it, I'm in love with the shape of you. That sounds really good, in my opinion, anyway. So then there's other things you might want to add reverb to. Um, here you see I've got guitars that have uh, reverb sent to them, but I've sent them in the stack track there. So they have reverb in there and. The important thing, the best thing about uh, the buses is rather than having an individual reverb for every track, I can send all of the vocals to the same bus. So you'll see here on all these ones, these are the actual tracks that I've been using. Um, they've got 19 and 20 buses and they all have the same, which basically means I'm not having to make sure they're all identical because they all go to the identical bus. Um, so sharing them up a bit. Now, you don't want to send everything to the same bus necessarily. For instance, uh, in my Cajon track, I'm sending it to 18. So 18 is a different uh, reverb. What reverb is it? Um, drum plate. So that's a 1.8 second drum plate rather than the 1.1 second reverb vocal plate. Um, and basically it just means that, because if you have everything, it will sound quite same. You might want different styles of 
of the track and everything. Um, so now, if I mute that and unmute everything else. So now if I play it all together, um, you may not be able to hear the reverb really obviously, but it should sound quite nice. And the guitar and the cajon reverb will also be there as well. I'm in love with the shape of you. We push and pull like a magnet do. I know my heart is falling too. I'm in love with your body. Last night you were in my room. And so what I've done there with the cajon is just added a longer reverb to create more space. Um, and that's all reverb's really about. It's about creating a space, creating interest to the track, um, and just making it sound a bit more natural and a bit uh, less dry. So that's it really on reverb. Um, I hope you guys liked that video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, be sure to subscribe to Sonically Sound as well if you want more videos like this. We have other videos on compression, noise gating, stuff like that, so be sure to take a look at them on my channel. And if you think there are some videos that I haven't done or I need to do, then put them in the comments below and I'll get to them if I can. Thanks, guys.